It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. One of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The Broken Window Murder Case. This program is brought to you by the makers of Anison, the remarkable tablets that bring incredibly fast and effective relief from the pain of headaches, neuritis, and neuralgia. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. Perhaps you, too, have been introduced to Anison this way. Then you know how effective Anison is. If not, try it yourself. Whenever you want incredibly fast relief from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, you'll be delighted with the results. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Just ask for Anison at any drug counter. It's spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. <laughs> Now for Mr. Keene and the Broken Window Murder Case. Our scene opens in a house situated on a large estate. It is very late, and in the library of the house, a middle-aged man sits with a book in his hands, unaware of the terrible danger that hovers nearby. Who's there? What are you doing in my house? How dare you come in here? You know very well that... Put that knife down. Put it down, do you hear? You... 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 Stab me. I... I... Oh... Are you Mr. Keene, sir? Yes. My name is Laura Franklin. I... My father... It's so awful. So horrible. I find it difficult to even talk about it, Mr. Keene. What seems to be the trouble, Laura? It's my father. He was stabbed to death last night in our home. Well, sense preserve us, Mr. Keene. No <laughs> wonder the girl's ready to collapse. Here, miss... Sit down and take it easy. Yes. Try to compose yourself, Laura. I... I made up my mind I wouldn't break down again before I told you the story and asked for your help, Mr. Keith. Well, this is my partner, Mike Clancy. You can say what you want to to him as well. When did it happen, Miss Laura? Last night, Mr. Clancy. I suppose it'll be in all the newspapers this afternoon. Dad was a well-known member of the community. Mr. Keene... You may have heard of his student endowment fund. Oh, was he the John Franklin who donated a large sum of money a few weeks ago to help educate promising young students? Yes, Mr. Keene. Your father was a generous man. He was very generous and well-liked. Father didn't have an enemy in the world. Why should someone have wanted to kill him? Well, tell me, do the police have any suspects? No, Mr. Keene. They only know that the killer entered our house by breaking a pane of glass in the window of Father's study. There were blood stains on the broken pane. And the police think the killer must have cut his hand. I see. Father was in the library at the time. It was two o'clock in the morning. And I was asleep upstairs. I... I found his body myself, Mr. Keene, early this morning. Well, Laura, what was your father doing up at two o'clock in the morning? He was troubled with insomnia. He'd usually read in the library until one or two. And you heard no noise, no sound of a scuffle? No, sir. 
My room is on the second floor in the back of the house. The killer used a knife, not a gun. And I heard nothing. Well, what about the servants, Laura? They're all down at police headquarters now being questioned. I'm certain they had nothing to do with it, though. They were all in the servants' cottage at the time, a few hundred yards from the main house. And I suppose they heard nothing, hmm? That's right, Mr. Keene. There isn't anyone I know of who might even be remotely connected with Father's murder. Not even... Not even who, Laura? Mr. Keene, I... I don't know why I thought of him. I mean, he'd never... To whom are you referring? Please, I must know all the facts. I'll tell you everything I know, Mr. Keene. No matter who may be hurt by it. The man I referred to just now is named George Haycraft. He was a suitor of mine before I met Charles. Charles? And who is he? Charles Meade. We fell in love several months ago, and we'd planned to get married. With Dad's consent, of course. And what about the other man, uh, George Haycraft? I I'm afraid George took me too seriously, and... Well, I had a little trouble with him. I was fond of him. But it wasn't the way it was with Charles Meade. I see. About a week ago, Mr. Keene, Charles and I were at my house making plans for our wedding. We were talking about our engagement announcement, which had appeared in the papers that morning. And the happy couple is expected to set a wedding date in the near future. Say, that's quite a write-up, Laura. First time I've ever seen my name in print. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dad's name that gets the publicity, Charles, darling. Not yours or mine. Well, they can keep the publicity. All I want is you. Oh, uh, expecting someone, Laura? No. Wait here, Charles. I'll see who it is. Why, George, how are you? Is it true, Laura? This announcement in the papers... Are you really engaged to Charles Mead? Why, yes, I... But you can't do this. I, I thought you'd wait. I mean, I thought that wait, you... Wait, were... for what? I don't understand, George. Wait until I got a better job. Didn't you know that I was in love with you too, Laura? George, you're joking. Do I sound like I'm joking? No, you don't. And you better keep your voice down while you're in this house. Keep out of this, Mead. Laura, do you want me to throw George Haycraft out? No, please, Charles. Let's not have any unpleasantness. George... I'm sorry that you seem to feel I loved you. I certainly didn't mean to give you that impression. I always believed we were friends and nothing more. It must have been your father. He's poisoned your mind against me. He knows I'm broke and he wants you to marry into money. Be your age, Haycraft. You've lost out with Laura. Don't look for excuses. Yes, Mead. I've lost out. But, Laura, I'm going to settle with your father... I'm going to tell him what I think of his conniving to keep us apart. But that isn't true, George. My father had nothing to do with Don't it. Don't tell me it isn't true. I know it is. I'm not going to have it out with him. Charles, do you think he means it? I don't know, Laura. But I'm going to keep an eye on George Haycraft in any case. Mr. Keene, the next morning, George Haycraft called me up and apologized for talking that way about my father. And what did he say, Laura? He said the news of my engagement to Charles upset him so he didn't know what he was saying at the time. And he promised never to see me or father again. And because he apologized, you didn't connect him at first with your father's murder? That's right, Mr. Keene. Although now... Now I can see how important it could actually be. Well, sure, and this fellow, George Haycraft, practically threatened your father, miss. Mike is right, Laura. Where can he be reached? George lives on 29th Street, number 823. Well, put that down, Mike. Okay, sir. He doesn't have a telephone. You'll have to go there and see him yourself, Mr. Keene. I will. But first, I want to look at the scene of the crime. Now, where is your home, Laura? Near Forest Hills. And we'll drive out there immediately. Mr. Keene, I... I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. Now that father's gone, I... I have no one close to me anymore, except my fiancé, Charles. He's been wonderful. And knowing that someone like I you... I understand, Laura. And I intend to do everything I can to solve the mystery of your father's murder. 
I must warn you, it won't be easy. You may be in some danger yourself. Mr. Keene, you think that I have an enemy too? It's very possible. In a murder case, Laura, everyone involved has an enemy. Because a killer will often stop at nothing to protect himself. Not even to adding another victim to his list. Come right in, Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy. Thank you, Laura. The servants are still downtown being questioned by the police, I imagine. Where is the library, Laura, where you found your father's body? Through that door to the left. And the study window that was broken? The study is through the door on the other side. Well, you needn't come in with us. Mike and I will examine the broken window first. Very well, Mr. King. I'll phone my fiancé, Charles, and tell him you've taken the case. I know he'll be as happy about it as I am. Well, let's go into the study, Mike. Yes, sir. There's the broken pane of glass in the window, Mr. Keene. Yes. Let's have a look at the blood stains on it. Well, whoever cut his hand on that pane of glass must have got himself a nasty wound, boss. Hmm. There's quite a bit of blood on it. Mike, see if you can open that window. Sure thing, sir. <laughs> well, she won't come open, sir. You know why? It's locked on the inside. Well, I don't see any lock, boss. It's hidden behind this sash. Oh, yes. It's a new type of lock that works very easily, and it's foolproof. Foolproof? How do you mean, sir? Should I answer that, Mr. Keene, sir? Uh, well, Laura Franklin must have answered in another room. Maybe I'd better listen in through this extension. Laura, dear, this is Lillian Dix. Oh? Yes, Lillian. I've just come from the police. They questioned me about your father's murder. I see. Laura, have you seen your friend George Haycraft recently? Not for over a week. I'm... I'm afraid I was forced to tell the police something about him. I ran into him on the street this morning, just after I heard of your poor father's death. What about George, Lillian? Perhaps I'd better come over and talk to you in person, Laura. Are you alone? No. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, and his partner are here. Mr. Keene? Has he entered the case? Yes, Lillian. Then I'll surely come over immediately. What I have to say is important. Then suppose you say it now, Miss Dick. But who's that? It sounds like Mr. Keene. It is, Laura. I'm on the phone extension of the study. Would you please hang up and let me talk to Miss Dix? Yes, of course. Now, Miss Dix, I take it you were a friend of John Franklin's, the murdered man. A very close friend, Mr. Keene. And what is it you've told the police in regard to George Haycraft? Please tell me now if it's urgent. Well, you know they found the blood on that broken window pane. Yes. When I saw George on the street this morning, his hand was bandaged. Hmm. That's very significant. Uh, suppose you come over here as you suggested, Miss Dix. Then we can talk further. Very well, Mr. Keene. You can expect me shortly. Mr. Keene, then it was George who murdered father. I didn't hang up, Mr. Keene. I listened as you talked to Lillian Dix. Perhaps you're jumping to a conclusion a little too quickly, Laura. But the blood on the broken window and the bandage on George's hand. Yes, it all fits in very well, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Keene, you sound like you're not so satisfied with the evidence. I'm not, Mike. However, I may be wrong. George Haycraft could have murdered John Franklin. Certainly he had a motive. But if it wasn't Haycraft, it was someone as clever as a fox and as cold-blooded as a tiger. You see, George Haycraft may have fallen into a trap. A trap, Mike, that's set for all of us. In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the broken window murder case. Meanwhile, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath. Yes, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. Use Colonos toothpaste with dental floss action. Your dentist will tell you, brush your teeth after meals to stop decay. Clean those cracks and crevices deep between your teeth to guard against unpleasing breath. Now Colonos gives you dental floss action. 
That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to help dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath. What's more, foamy, refreshing Colinos brightens teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains, helps stop tooth decay. Get Colinos toothpaste with dental floss action today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the broken window murder case. Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating the murder of John Franklin, a wealthy philanthropist who was stabbed to death in his home. One of the important clues in the case is a broken window pane which is stained with blood, a clue which places a young man named George Haycraft high on the list of suspects. Now, Mr. Keene and Mike continue their investigation in Franklin's house, and Mr. Keene is saying to Laura, the victim's daughter, Tell me, Laura, how close a friend of your father was Lillian Dix, the woman who just phoned? In my opinion, Mr. Keene, Lillian hoped to marry father. Although she denied it to me when I accused her... Accused her? Of what? Of fortune hunting. Oh, you think she wanted to marry your father for his money? Yes, Mr. Keene. Frankly, Lillian Dix and I never got along. I was against her seeing my father and she knew it. She's only 32 and Dad was 50. Why would a woman want to marry a widower so much older than herself? Especially a woman as beautiful and popular with men as Lillian Dixie. Yeah, perhaps we'll have an answer to that question when she gets here. Meanwhile, Laura, I'd like you to show my partner, Mike Clancy, around the grounds. You want me to search outside, Mr. Keene, for clues? Yes, Mike. I'm going to look through Mr. Franklin's correspondence and personal papers. If you'll come with me, I'll show you around, Mr. Clancy. Okay, miss. And Mike... Keep your eyes open for footprints. The ground is soft, and the killer may have left some mark. Sooner or later, they all make a mistake. And a murderer's mistake is a private investigator's windfall. Our property runs across to that clump of trees, Mr. Clancy. It's all enclosed by a stone wall, as you can see. Well, I don't think we're going to find out much on this lawn, Laura. Let's have a look at that shrubbery in back of the house. All right. It's getting late. It'll be dark very soon now. It don't look as if I'll have much of a chance to look things over until morning. Well, we... Mr. Clancy, I think I just saw someone move behind those shrubs. So did I, Laura. He hasn't seen us. Look, he's coming out. Ah! It's George Haycraft. With a bandage round his left hand. You stay here, Miss Laura. What are you going to do, Mr. Clancy? Have a little chat with Mr. Haycraft. All right, stay where you are now, young fella. What? Don't try to make a run for it. But what are you... Oh, get, let go of me. Stay put, do you hear me? Yes, go. Oh, so hey. that's the way you want to be, Buck over. Hey. Oh, uh, oh, maybe you'll mind your manners. We'll put these bracelets on you just to... What's this? I... I... It's a hole in the ground. Freshly dug, too. You kicked part of the turf away with your heel when you fell down, mister. Maybe we've got something interesting here on our hands. Saints preserve us. It's a dead rabbit. A, de a dead rabbit? Its head has been bashed in. Somebody must have buried it there. Do you know anything about it, Haycraft? How did you know my name? Never mind how. I also know you're wanted for murder. And you've been snooping around here like a hound after a bone. What are you looking for? I won't say any more until I have legal advice. Oh, sure, you'll need a whole battery of lawyers after Mr. Keene pins this thing on you. Mr. Keene? He's on this case, too? He sure is, mister. And you're getting a first-hand introduction to him right now. <laughs> And I caught this fellow, George Haycraft, snooping around outside the house, Mr. Keene. He put up a fight and I had to knock him down. That's how I came across the dead rabbit buried there. Buried rabbit? Hmm. Looks as though we have a very important clue, Mike. Well, Haycraft, do you have anything to say? I had nothing to do with John Franklin's murder. What were you doing outside his house just now? I... I was hoping to talk to Laura, his daughter. And why didn't you come into the house by the front door? Because... I knew I was under suspicion of murder, Mr. Keene. I have a radio at home that can tune in on police wavelengths. 
And I heard them send out an alarm for me. I didn't cut my hand on that broken window, Mr. Keene. I cut it accidentally when I fell on some broken glass. Why did you want to see Laura Franklin? I had to tell her I wasn't responsible for her father's death. Where is Laura, Mr. Keene? I want to see her. She told me she didn't want to face you, Haycraft. She's up in her room. Mike, will you see who's at the door? Right, boss. Oh, uh, who are you? Well, that's just what I was going to ask you, mister. Step inside. Oh, wait, uh, I know who this gentleman is. You're Mr. Keene, aren't you, sir? Yes, and this is Mike Clancy, my partner. Oh, I'm Charles Mee, Laura Franklin's fiancé. Laura called me and told me that you... Oh, I see you've gotten your hands on George Haycraft. I didn't kill John Franklin, and you know it, me. I don't know anything of the kind, Haycraft. All I know is that you've been driving Laura crazy with your jealous antics. It's about time someone put a stop to them. Mike, I want to go out and look at that rabbit you found buried. Where is it? Well, I'd better show you, boss. What'll we do with George Haycraft here? Take him with us? No, he's handcuffed and harmless now. Perhaps Charles Meade will keep an eye on him. It'll be a pleasure, Mr. Keene. And Haycraft, I suggest you behave yourself while we're outside. What else can I do with these irons on my wrists? All right, Mike. Show me where that dead rabbit is. Perhaps it'll turn out to be the clue we've been looking for. A clue that'll place John Franklin's murderer in the electric chair. Well, the hole's over here, boss. Behind these shrubs. Yes. The hole is there, Mike, but the dead rabbit isn't. Sans preservus. It's gone, Mr. Keene. Mike, someone's coming across the lawn to the front of the house. I think that may be Lillian Dix. Just a second, miss. What? You want me? Yes. My name is Keene. Oh, Mr. Keene. For a moment I was frightened. It's getting rather dark. How long have you been out here? Why, I just arrived. I parked my car on the other side of the house. I'm Lillian Dix. Miss Dix? I've just been told that you and John Franklin, the murdered man, were on the verge of getting married. What about it? When was the ceremony to take place? Oh, never. What do you mean, Miss Dix? John decided not to go through with the marriage. Anything you say may be used against you, Miss Dix. What does he mean by that, Mr. Keene? My partner means that the police can establish a motive should they suspect you of murdering John Franklin. Oh, no, no, they couldn't. I agreed with John. I thought it was wiser not to marry, too, because of Laura, his daughter. You mean she objected to your marrying her father? Not only that, Mr. Keene. There was something else. John never told me exactly. But I think it had a lot to do with Laura. <coughs> oh. Oh. Mr. Keene, look. There's a fight going on inside the house. They busted a window. You remain here, Miss Dix. Hurry, Mike, and stop that fight before it's too late. Mr. Mr. Mead, what's happened? Oh, it's you, Mr. Keene. George Haycraft tried to get away. I managed to hit him with that fire poker. He's lying there on the floor. Take a look at him, Mike. Is he dead? No, he's just unconscious. But he could have been out for good, Charles Mead, if you'd clipped him a little harder. Are you disappointed, Mead? What did you say, Mr. Keene? Are you sorry you didn't hit Haycraft hard enough to kill him? Why, no. I, I was only protecting myself. Yes. You were protecting yourself. Mr. Keene, just what do you mean by that? I mean that you murdered John Franklin and just attempted to kill George Haycraft because he had some evidence against you. Uh, th that's a lie. Is it? And what are those bloodstains doing in your left knee? Uh, bloodstains? I'll tell you how you got them, Charles Mead. I noticed them before. You just transferred the body of that dead rabbit to another hiding place. And you brushed its mutilated body against your clothes as you did it. Well, now I know you're crazy, Keene. Why would I be fooling with a, a dead rabbit? That rabbit was evidence. Evidence that you tried to frame Haycraft for John Franklin's murder. Franklin's killer didn't enter by the window. As I told you, Mike, it was locked from the inside. I remember you saying that, boss. Charles Mead first killed the rabbit then broke the window after murdering Franklin. He smeared the broken pane with the rabbit's blood. 
So Haycraft would be accused of the crime. Well, then Charles Meade must have known that Haycraft had cut his hand. Exactly, Mike. Yes, yes. Yes, he knew, Mr. Keene. Haycraft's coming around, boss. I... I cut my hand during a fist fight with Charles Meade yesterday. He knocked me down and my hand hit some broken glass. Just now he tried to kill you to prevent you from exposing him. He... He attacked me with that fire poker as I was sitting in a chair. Meade, it looks as though you tripped up on your own cleverness. You tried to plant a blood stain on a window as evidence against George Haycraft. But now it'll be used as evidence against yourself. Yes, you're right, Keene. I won't try to hide it. John Franklin wanted to put me in jail. He found out I was wanted for embezzlement in Chicago. But I wouldn't let him get away with it. And I'm not letting you get away with this either. Look out, boss. He's reaching for that fire poker. Yes. He was pretty smart, old John Franklin was. He figured I was marrying his daughter, Laura, for the money she'd come into. And he was right. But I was wise to his every move. When you murdered Franklin, you must have got into the house with a key you stole from Laura. <laughs> right again, Keen. If he don't put that fire poker away, boss, he'll go out of here on a stretcher. You see this gun, mister? It's got bullets in it. Go on, shoot. But I'll get one of you first. Ah! Oh, my hand. My hand. You, you put a bullet in my hand. Get me a doctor. Sure, and two seconds ago, he was as brave as a wild bull. Now he's yelling for a doctor. You're lucky that bullet didn't go through your head, mister. Call a doctor, Mike. And get Charles Meade's maid. Okay, Mr. King. And after that, call the police. Tell them we're bringing Meade in on a charge of murder. And the case of the broken window is solved. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the broken window murder case. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way, have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummert. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Directed by Richard Leonard. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the quicksand murder case. Ever suffer heartburn or upset stomach from acid indigestion? Safe new Bicidol mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown-up feeling. Give longer lasting relief than baking soda. Yes, hours of relief. Bicidol mints not only neutralize, but actually carry away excess stomach acids. Soothe irritated stomach lining. Let you sleep all night long when acid indigestion strikes. Carry new Bicidol mints for fast relief anywhere... Any time. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at this same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Colinos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.